What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make sure that your Power BI files will refresh in the Power BI service when you're connected to a web data source. In last week's video, I showed you how to connect to as much cryptocurrency historical price data as you could possibly want, but the issue was it only refreshed in Power BI Desktop, but once we publish up to Power BI Service, that refresh doesn't work. And you'll probably come across this a lot in your Power BI journey. So this video is gonna show you the three ways to make sure that your Power BI file is gonna refresh in the service. So to give you a quick preview of what we're gonna be talking about in this video, uh, the first section we're gonna talk about the relative path parameter to use in the web.contents function when making that web call. In the second section we're gonna talk about the query parameter, similar in the web.contents function. And then thirdly, we're gonna talk about the web.contents versus web.browser contents uh, functions as well. So those are kind of the three um, things that will trip you up when publishing up to Power BI service. So yeah, once you know these three things, you can always make sure that your web calls are going to refresh online on Power BI service. Before we get into the video, I want to take a quick second to ask if you are new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, it helps me out a ton as a content creator and helps me continue making Power BI content for all of you. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and dive into this informative Power BI video. Like I said before, we're gonna be looking at the file we talked about in last week's video on getting that cryptocurrency data. So you can actually get this file, download it for yourself over on the BILE.com slash blog. Uh, it's this last post here, Analyze Crypto Data and Power BI. So if you go to that page, you can download this PBX to follow along with us. That is what we're gonna be looking at here. So um, we can refresh this file as much as we want in Power BI Desktop, it's gonna work just fine. Um, and I've published this up to Power BI Service and we can try to kick off a refresh as well. So let's go ahead and go to data sets. It's called historical crypto data. There we go. So let's go ahead and try to refresh this guy and we're gonna get an error immediately. Uh, it says this data, set, this data set includes a dynamic data source. And that's the issue that you're gonna come across when you're querying a web page, but you kind of have it set up in a dynamic way. Um, if you weren't with us for last video, um, the dynamic piece of this is because we're querying multiple different cryptocurrency pairs. For example, I have 10 pairs here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and so on. And we are calling this function to get all of their data and we're passing in that pair. So it's dynamic in that Power BI service is calling web.contents for this dynamic URL. You know, it's, it's got this you know first section and it's got the dynamic pair name and then it's got this last section that's always the same. So we need to set it up in a way that it's not dynamic in like Power BI services definition of, of dynamics. We gotta make this static. And we do that by using the relative path parameter within the web.contents function. So if we wanna fix this, we just need to add that parameter. Um, and you can see that this web.contents is actually inside of a nested function called calling json.document. So I'm gonna go ahead and format this in a way that makes it a little bit easier to understand the nesting of all these functions. So I'm going to move this down, just bear with me. I'm just going to make my parentheses look a little bit better. And now you can see everything within web.contents falls within these parentheses and json.document is kind of the outer shell. So um, basically web.contents in its form right now is just taking the URL and it works in desktop. So all we need to do is basically take everything after this first base URL. So we're gonna put a comma after that and move the dynamic part down below that and let's get rid of this and because we're not appending anything at this point. We're gonna use the relative path parameter, but we have to do this within brackets. So let's put a bracket there and close off this bracket. I'm gonna say relative path equals pair and that little you know, endpoint. So basically what this is saying is this base URL is a static URL, and then we're going to append this ending to that static URL. So it kind of checks the box for a Power BI service saying, okay, it can't be a dynamic URL. That's checked because we have a static URL. And then we just add a dynamic portion onto the end. And before I go too far, I, I need to shout out Chris Webb and his awesome blog. I know I definitely learned this from him years ago. He probably posted a blog on this about like seven years ago or more. If you ever have any questions on the Power Query language or performance tuning, make sure you check out Chris Webb's blog firstly. I mean, there's so much great stuff there. Um, I'll definitely link that down in the description if you want to check it out. 
So uh, this is all we need in order to make this Power BI file refresh. We have this relative path parameter inside of uh, these brackets. And we have our dynamic bit that's going to basically not make the refresh fail. So if we click done, we can go ahead and look at data and we see everything's coming together. Let me go ahead and refresh preview to make sure it's actually working. Looks like it's going well. And before I go too far, I do have this one query here that I'm going to disable the load of because this actually has an issue of its own that we're gonna tackle later on in this video. So if I go ahead and close and apply, gonna load that data in, give it just a second to finish loading all that crypto data. So the new data is loaded. Um, this uh, is now broken because of my disabling the load, but don't worry about that too much. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and publish this up to Power BI Service. And success, let's go back to Power BI Service. And let's go ahead and refresh. And let's go see if our new data set is there. It should be called historical crypto data. Let's go ahead and kick off a refresh. And it refreshed successfully. One quick gotcha, if you're just doing this for the first time, I've already actually done this a couple times, uh, you need to go to settings and it might have failed for you because you don't have any credentials in here for the web. It's an anonymous call, so just make sure it's on anonymous. Click sign in and you won't have that issue anymore. Uh, if you do run into this issue, since our base URL is actually not a reachable URL, just click this skip test connection and you're good to go. Um, so now I'm just gonna refresh one more time just to make sure it works and we're good to go. So that's the relative path parameter and that's gonna be, I don't know, 80% of why your Power BI service refreshes aren't working with a web data call. Next, we're gonna talk about the web.browser contents call versus the web.contents call. So again, in the last video, if you recall, we created a table based on a web page. Um, this periods table here, we actually were looking at this web page. And let's just paste this in quickly to give some context. So we were grabbing this table on this page. So if you're using uh, like table by examples using the web view like we were, um, then you're gonna run into this issue because when you actually look at the code that it created, it uses web.browser contents. And you know, in the previous example, we we're using web.contents. So web.browser contents isn't refreshable on Power BI service. So in order to fix this, you just have to do web.contents. You just have to get rid of web.browser contents and make sure that this still refreshes and it's looking pretty good. I honestly don't know where this might fail. Um, it works just fine for me when I replace it with web.contents. Um, but if anyone has any examples or information on where this wouldn't work, then please let me know. But we can, now that we've loaded that in, or actually we haven't loaded that in yet, we just fixed the function. Let me enable this load since we disabled it earlier. So I'm going to load that in now. So now that's valid. I did have a relationship set up between periods. So give me one second while I do attribute to value. I believe that's what it was. Yep, that looks pretty good. So now we have our periods. So um, just quickly, I'm gonna publish this back up to make sure it continues to refresh. Back in Power BI service, I'm gonna refresh this guy and go down to my data set. Uh, let's just go ahead and refresh it. Yep, still good. Um, so just fixing that will, will fix your refresh issue if using web.browser contents. Um, last item here is the query parameter. And this is similar to the relative path parameter, but I don't actually have an example for you within this file. That's why we kind of went out of order. Um, so the query parameter, let's actually look at an example um, on the web. So if I look at my blog here, so let me go back to the blog. So sometimes you're searching a web data source in order to get some data back. For example, I have a little magnifying glass in the top right corner of the blog and you can search for uh, terms here. So if I wanted to search for, let's say I have a blog post on Microsoft Forms data. So if I wanna search for forms, it's gonna come up with like all of the blog posts that match that. And this first one is uh, how to connect to Microsoft Forms data within Power BI. Uh, but you see in the URL, you have this question mark S equals forms. So that's saying, search, I guess, equals forms. That is my search. So this question mark indicates that it's a query. 
Um, so similarly within Power BI, if I wanted to grab data on let's say 10 different search terms, I would use some kind of dynamic setup where I'm gonna pass in S equals forms, S equals DAX, S equals Power BI, and I would accumulate all of that data in a dynamic way. But again, Power BI service is gonna say, hey, that's a dynamic URL. We're not gonna let you do that. Um, so you set this up with a uh, query parameter within that web.contents call. So I've quickly added a table of search terms. Let's go ahead and connect to um, just a, an example web query with our search that we did online. Let's go ahead and paste this in and see what Power BI comes back to us with. Let's see what we have here. Please enter a value. Okay, looks like we're good. Um, so let's load that in. And in this first table here, it has uh, some good data about you know what's returned in that search. So I'm gonna go ahead and load in this table. So let us see what uh, Power BI generated for us with using the GUI there. So it's using the web.browser content. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to web.contents like we talked about in the previous step. But now we need to use the query parameter in order to apply a dynamic query in order to query you know, different search terms and get different data back. So um, let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, query that we're applying there. And I'm also going to format this a little bit nicer. So let's move this down. Let's move our URL down and our final parentheses. So let's put a comma after our base URL. And like in the first example where we're talking about relative path, we now in brackets have a query parameter and that's set equal to brackets. And then you can add uh, individual dynamic queries. So in our case, it was S equals. So each query is gonna have S equals, and then we're gonna pass in a term. So this can be a string called forms, it can be a string called dax, but we're actually gonna pass in a parameter. So in order to do that, we're gonna make this a function. You do that by adding parentheses before everything else. And I'm going to make a parameter called term, which is a text data type and a hash rocket to make it a function. So I'm gonna pass in term for my query. So as you can see, the, uh, the format of this call, web.contents, base URL, and in brackets, you have this query parameter equals S equals term. So we're passing in a, a dynamic search term. So let's go ahead and click done. And I'm gonna call this get uh, search term. And let's go back to our table of search terms, add a column, invoke custom function. And let's do get search term, column one. And now it's gonna query BI Elite for all these different search terms. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we get for everything. So we have a lot of stuff. So for forms, we get these uh, four rows. For DAX, we get these mini rows. For Power BI, we get you know a bunch of different other rows because I'm always blogging about Power BI. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this in, publish up to Power BI service for one final check to make sure this file, which contains all three different gotchas um, where it might not refresh in Power BI service, make sure it does refresh on Power BI service. So back in Power BI service, uh, quickly refresh. And historical crypto data. Ah, let's just kick off a refresh. And if all is good, we have a successful refresh. So now we can set this up to refresh on a schedule if we like. Um, and basically do whatever you want to do within Power BI service to make sure that this file refreshes and, and your data stays fresh. Um, and that's it. Hope you, you know, like this really informative video. We went pretty deep into this, but you know, it's taken me a lot of time to accumulate, you know, this knowledge about why files aren't refreshing in Power BI service. So I thought it might be helpful for you. Again, if you did like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button if you like the video and I'll see you in the next one.